So far, the one thing that we are absolutely sure about is that all the objects, living or non-living, is pulled towards the earth. What I essentially mean to say is that if we have an object on, this, on the surface of the earth, something, something like this, let me make it, on the surface of the earth, if we have an object like this, let me, let me write object over here. And this right over here is the core of the earth. Then the force with which this object is being pulled towards the core of the earth is what you refer to as the weight. Weight in fact is a force and it has to be computed in Newtons. Now, in order to take this session forward, let me take up an example and this is going to be really beautiful. For that, what I'll be taking is a cylindrical object. This right over here is a cylindrical object and what we'll try to do is let me make core over here. This is the core of the earth. Now, each and every object on our planet or in fact in our solar system or in fact in our galaxy is made up of extremely small particles that is at the molecular level. In the same manner, this cylindrical is also made up of extremely small particle. Let us say this is one, this is particle two, three and so on. You can have n number of particles, infinite particles. All these particles will have their individual masses corresponding to which they'll have their weights also. And these weights will be directed towards the core of the earth. Okay, these are the individual weights. Now, if I were to tell you that I want to replace all these forces, that is this weight, by one single force or one single resultant, then the point where that resultant acts is known as the center of gravity center of gravity this point right over here is what you call the center of gravity because this is the force which is passing through or which is acting onto this point okay and which is directed towards the core of the earth right this is the total weight resultant weight shall i say right so the point at which the resultant of all the weights of small particles are acting is what we refer to as the center of gravity of an object now, in order to understand this, let me let me make a very small figure. Okay, let me use a yellow color. So it's it's something like this. If you if you have a cylindrical object, something like this. Okay, let me let me try to make this. Um, and this this in fact will have an axis also. So essentially, the axis starts at the top, center top to center bottom this way then in such a case the center of gravity of this will lie somewhere here okay if the if you say that the height of this cylinder is l then the center of gravity will lie at a distance of l by 2 from the base this is the base of the cylinder and this is the top of the cylinder right and this point right over here let, let me use a different color green one and this point right over here is what you call the center of gravity for this cylinder. Now guys this example must have give you an intuition as to what the concept of center of gravity is all about and if you want to learn more about centroids and center of gravity well keep watching this video as it's coming up. Now let's take up some more examples and after watching them I'm pretty much sure that you guys must be getting a very good feel as to what this concept of center of gravity is all about and the first example that i'm going to kick off with is this copy right well this can be assumed as the shape of a rectangular plate since the cross section is rectangular and at the same time it has a certain amount of thickness okay and this can be considered as a rectangular plate well some of you guys might be referring to this as a cuboid yes that is perfectly right no problem now what we wish to do is we wish to find the center of gravity or the point where the entire weight of this copy of this rectangular plate of this cuboid acts well how can that be assessed how can that be worked out this is something that i'm going to demonstrate to you right now now what i'll be doing is i'll try to balance this and simultaneously i expect all of you watching this video to do this along with me okay try to balance this at the tip of your finger and the point where you'll be able to balance it that point is in fact the center of gravity i'll tell you why so let's try to do the process suppose we select this point over here okay if i keep it like this it's gonna fall over again if i take this point for example and if i keep it 
like this it's gonna again fall over so there must be there are infinite points over here right n number of points over here but there is one such point and if i can make a contact with that point okay or if i try to balance um, this entire object about that point then this will become absolutely horizontal and that point is right at the center something like this and if i try to balance this it's gonna remain balanced right absolutely horizontal this is that point now guys you can see that this entire rectangular plate is made up of extremely small particles distributed uh, along this volume entire volume and all those particles will be having their individual masses right and the resultant of all those particles are going to act over here in the downward direction and that is what you refer to as weight so what i am basically trying to do is that i am applying a force of equal magnitude in the same line of action i am applying a force of equal magnitude in the upward direction in the upward direction okay and once you do so this rectangular plate is going to achieve its state of horizontal equilibrium so essentially what i mean to say is all the weight all the weight of this particular copy rectangular plate is right here right here at this point all the weight of this copy is right here okay all the weight is right here and it is acting in the downward direction or this is acting towards the core of the earth and what we wish to do is we wish to apply a force equal to its weight right over here okay in the opposite direction and once you do so the plate will remain balanced that's it so this was first example okay so essentially center of gravity is that point onto which the entire weight of the object or the body or a solid shape acts let's let's take a take in one more example um let's take this pen for instance what if i tell you that we want to balance this point okay something like this if i try to balance at this point over here some a point along its longitudinal axis it's going to fall over if i keep it over here again it falls over if i keep it over here yeah, yes 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 there is a point there is a point just just here you can clearly see that at this point this becomes absolutely horizontal that means this is the point where the center of gravity of of this cylindrical shaped pen is right and technically speaking this is the point where the entire weight of this pen is acting okay this is the point where the entire weight of the pen is acting and what we are trying to do is we are trying to apply an equal amount of force in the upward direction in this same line of action of the weight we are applying an equal amount of force in the upward direction and once you achieve to do so this plane will achieve its state of horizontal equilibrium right so these were the two examples to make you explain the center of gravity to give you a feel as to what center of gravity is all about now let's go ahead and let's try to understand the concept of centroid which is also known as the geometric center and this particular term is more closely associated with math and geometry than with physics but it is my duty to make you understand what centroid is and for that we're going to take two examples and in both the examples i'll be taking into consideration plane figures the first plane figure that i'm going to talk about is that of an isosceles triangle right and what we wish to do is we wish to suspend this isosceles triangle at two different points that point could be anywhere along the periphery right now first of all i'll let me punch in a hole and there it is you can clearly see at this point if i try to suspend this okay this line is directed towards the center of the earth okay is directed towards the earth you can say and what we wish to do is we wish to make this line right here let me go ahead and do this now what i am going to do is i'm going to repeat the same stuff with respect to some other point let's say i punch a hole over here right let's do this quickly now what we're going to do is we'll again make a line this line is directed towards the earth right and the point of intersection of the already drawn line and the line that we are about to draw right now is its geometrical center also known as centroid now if you want to suspend this with respect to some other point you can go ahead and do so let's say if we want to suspend this plane figure isosceles triangle with respect to a point right over here okay and the line that we're going to make or the line that will be directed towards the earth is also going to pass through this very point only okay i'll show you i'll prove it to you let's say we have a point right over here so it's 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 going to be something like this 
if you watch carefully okay if you try to draw a line it's going to pass through this centroid only right so this is essentially what you call a centroid and let, let me take in some more examples let us take for instance this pentagon okay so what i'm am i going to do i'm going to repeat the same stuff that i did with that isosceles triangle okay let me punch in a hole oh my god all right so here we go i'm suspending this regular pentagon all these sides are equal with respect to this point so we can essentially draw a line right here okay which will be directed towards the earth so let, let us again do the same experiment with respect to some other point let's say we are gonna suspend this with respect to this point right here okay so we have the point and let us suspend it like this right again i'm gonna draw a line and the intersection of this line with this already drawn line is going to give you the location of the geometric center aka centroid now guys this is where it gets very interesting and i'm pretty much sure that some of you guys might be wondering whether centroid and center of gravity convey the same meaning or are they same well let me clear all your doubts and for that we'll have an illustration now this blue colored rectangle is a steel plate let's assume it to be a steel plate all right and if i were to find its centroid what i'll do is i'll draw its diagonals and the intersection of those two diagonals is going to give me the centroid so this point right over here is the centroid of this steel plate that's it and if i were to find its center of gravity so what i'm going to do is i'll try to balance it at different points and the point where it becomes absolutely horizontal or the point where it becomes balanced is its center of gravity now guys just think about this this is a steel plate having negligible thickness and if you try to balance it at different points okay you'll reach here when you reach here you'll find or when you reach the centroid you'll find that it gets balanced about its centroid only okay so therefore here you can say that the center of gravity and centroid are one and same let me tell you again it's a steel plate and the thickness is very less let's take one more example what about this let's say this portion of the plate or half the portion of the plate is aluminum aluminum and the remaining half is steel now steel being heavy right steel being heavy its density is more and aluminum being a bit uh, less heavy comparable to steel um, let's say this is density of aluminum as rho a and what 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 we know by simple observation is that the density of steel is more than the density of aluminum that means the weight of steel is going to be more than the weight of aluminum just think about this when i spoke of centroid i always told you it has got to do with geometry and it has absolutely nothing to do with the weight okay so when you speak of centroid it's the geometrical center and this is how you're going to get the centroid so this point right over here is the centroid doesn't matter if the upper portion is aluminium and the portion below this um, is steel or not everything depends on geometry as far as centroid is concerned but when you speak about center of gravity and if i were to ask you try to balance this try to balance this half aluminium half steel a uh, composite um, plate at this point will you be able to balance it about this point will you be able to do so well i'm afraid you won't be able to do so because when you try to balance it then this plate is going to topple towards the portion which is heavier let's say this is steel and let's say this portion over here is aluminium then it is going to topple like this towards the steel portion why why because this point is not the center of gravity this is the geometrical center but this is not the center of gravity and that's why i'll tell you that the center of gravity will be slightly shifted towards this heavier side and this over here approximately is the center of gravity okay this point let me make a point over here so you can clearly see that both centroid and center of gravity have been separated by some distance now let me make one more important conclusion centroid is essentially a point where all the area all the area of the uh, plane figure let's say for this example all the area of the plane figure the entire area i shall say 
entire area of the plane figure is assumed to be concentrated and when you speak of this center of gravity this is where the entire weight let me write this properly entire weight is assumed to be concentrated so this is essentially the difference between center of gravity and centroid and if you're just wondering from where did this definition arrive well this is going to be discussed in the next episode of the concept of centroid and center of gravity thank you for watching this episode of the concept of centroid and center of gravity i'll see you again in episode number two where we're going to get a bit more mathematical in our approach in order to find the value of centroid in order to look at centroids and center of gravities see you again in episode number two until then it's a wrap this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day and keep learning thank you